Better late than never. Tonight, a Naples man with the title of Air Force Brigadier General is on a mission. He told Fox 4's Calvin Lewis why he wants his former Conrad to receive a special honor for his actions back in the 1990s. Once I got to the academy and got exposed to airplanes and fighter aircraft especially, I was hooked. For Air Force Brigadier General Jim Damaris, serving in the military is like family, and those you serve alongside are like brothers. I actually had an uncle who had served in, in uh, World War II, who by all his accounts single-handedly won the air war over Europe, and I was fascinated by his stories, and he encouraged me to apply to the Air Force Academy, which I did. It was at the academy where Jim would meet Stephen Phyllis. Together, they shared a bond over boxing, both being left-handed or southpaws. Steve and I trained a lot together, um, and he ended up being in uh, my corner man in a championship bout uh, in about 1980, and that started a friendship that uh, that then kind of went uh, a little bit different way. We both went to pilot training. Steve uh, decided he wanted to fly the A-10. I elected to fly the F-15, and so our, our aviation career paths diverged, uh, yet we shared a lot of common experiences in pilot training and the fighter weapon school. And then Steve was activated in August of 1990 to kick off Desert Shield and later served in Desert Storm. On February 15th, 1991, Damara says his friend Steve Phyllis and his brand new wingman, Lieutenant Rob Sweet, were tasked with attacking Saddam Hussein's elite Republican Guards Division. After making several successful passes, a surface-to-air missile was fired at Sweet's plane. He deployed flares to escape it. A second missile hit him from behind, blowing off part of his wing and sending his plane into a steep spiral. Sweet ejects, and when his parachute opened, he was left dangling over the elite Iraqi armored division he had just finished bombing. Steve flies in orbit over the division to draw fire away from Sweet's descent. He fired flares to draw attention, making his A-10 a target. It's at this moment he knows he's not coming back. He keys the microphone and using the code word for the day, transmits Enfield 37 is bagged as well. And it's the last radio transmission that he makes. And unbeknownst to his family, his fiance, his friends, his fellow fighter pilots, moments later he is engaged, shot down, and killed by another Iraqi surface-to-air missile system. In that moment, Steve Phyllis decided to put his wingman's life before his own, his last act being that of heroism. He didn't have to stay there. He didn't have to drop flares and make himself a target. Uh, he didn't have to stand over those 10,000 angry troops now emboldened by their success. Uh, yet the thought of leaving never crossed his mind. And when you look at bravery above and beyond the call of duty to save a fellow airman, to me, that checks all the boxes that we look for in our Medal of Honor recipients. The Medal of Honor is the highest and most prestigious military decoration that can be awarded. The last time a pilot was decorated with the medal was during the Vietnam War. So far, there have been no Medals of Honor awarded for any combat bravery for Desert Storm. And I think it's time for us to relook at that, and I can think of no more fitting case than that of Captain Steve Phyllis. It's a mission that Damaris has taken upon himself to see fulfilled. A mission with the hope that Steve's story lives on. We're going to start with a grassroots campaign and see where it goes, but I have high hopes that as the word of his heroics get out, that it'll get interest from a lot of different outlets and, and, and different forms of media to help get the story out to the millions of people who need to hear it. In Naples, Calvin Lewis, Fox 4.